A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, Unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles, and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church as well as the apostles and the presbyters, and they reported what God had done with them. But some from the party of the Pharisees, who had become believers, stood up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and the presbyters met together to see about this matter. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A responsorial psalm is from Psalm 122. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, built as a city, with compact unity, to it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear sister, dear brother, I remember last year when one of my sons was preparing to receive his first Holy Communion. You know how it is. We were planning a big party for him and um, we had the menu, we had selected the menu, the food we were going to cook and at some point we came to the cake. There must be a communion cake. I mean, that's what everybody does. It's part of the party. There should be a big, nicely iced cake if possible with his name written on it and maybe the date and um, you know 
So I went to work together with his godmother and we started trying to find someone who would bake the cake for us. After about two inquiries, three inquiries, I was already getting a headache. And we didn't even want a big cake, yeah? Just, just something small, just something symbolic. Anyway, so it turned out that things had become very expensive, you know, because of the Ukraine war. Everything had become so expensive. And if we really wanted to have a communion cake, we were not going to spend less than 200 euros. Oh my God. I thought about it for some time. And at some point I asked myself, must there really be a First Holy Communion cake? Who really made this law that there must always be an iced cake. So I was talking with one of my sisters and I told her, I said, you know what? I'm sincerely considering not buying a cake because I can't really wrap my head around spending so much money on sugar. That's what it is, right? Sugar. And you know how it is. Most of the cake, the icing, which makes it so, so expensive, lands in the dustbin. People hardly ever eat the icing. They might even manage to eat some of the cake, but the icing remains in the plate and lands in the dustbin. I didn't see why I should spend so much money on it. Cut a long story short. I called my boy and I explained to him. I said, Jason... We are trying to get a, a, a cake for your communion party, but they are so expensive. Before I could even bring out the words, this boy said, Mommy, I don't need a cake. I was like, oh, wow, that was easy. Of course, he had been hearing our conversations. He had been hearing our deliberations and uh, he knew what was going on. Now, not having a communion cake was one thing. The question now was, what were we going to do with the money? So I asked him, what should we do with the money which we should have used for your cake? And together we came up with the idea to send that money to the less privileged. And that is how it happened. One or two weeks after the, the communion party, some, I met some of our guests, those who had been there, and I asked her, did you notice anything? What did you miss at the party? She said, everything was so perfect. Everything was good. And I said that there was something lacking, and she couldn't think about it. So when I told her that there was no communion cake, she was like, Oh, now that you say it, now that you mention, my dear brother, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with having a communion cake or a birthday cake or a wedding cake or whatever kind of cake. No, absolutely not. But I have a problem, the same problem that the new converts had in the first reading of today which is the problem of rules. Someone makes rules and imposes it on everybody. And before you know it, you start hearing statements like, no, you can't. You can't make a party without a, 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 an iced cake. You can't do A without B. And which is absolutely not true. Unless you are circumcised according to the mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Is that true? But that's what was being used to pressurize the new converts. So, I'm just trying to encourage us 
Don't follow fashion. Don't follow the standards of society. Think for yourself. Think about your situation. Think about your family. Think about your standards and ask yourself, must I do this? Must I do this just because everyone is doing it? And if the answer is no, then don't do it. In the gospel, Jesus tells us, remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. When we remain close to Jesus, he will always guide us. The Holy Spirit will always inspire us and tell us what to do. The Holy Spirit will always give us the courage and the wisdom to go against the waves, to turn away from what everyone is doing and do what you believe is good for you. I wish you a very, very wonderful Wednesday. God bless you. If you have enjoyed this, go ahead and share and be a blessing to another person. If God gives us life, we'll be back again 